I was brought up in a really uh, new age house. Um, my mum was into an Indian guru and my dad, even though we were separated, he was into the I Ching and zodiac signs and kind of a bit of, um, probably a bit of witchcraft as well, although they wouldn't have called it witchcraft at the time, tarot cards and things like that. So I grew up in that environment and um, wasn't really interested in any of it. I just kind of let them do their own thing. And um, as I was um, growing up into a teenager, even though those things were around me, um, I got to know about other religions as well, which again didn't interest me at all. Um, although I did come across Christians at time, and uh, I, I built up this idea that all Christians wore, um, you know, A-line skirts. I mean, I was a teenager; I was quite ignorant, and hair, and you know, had their hair in, in ponytails the whole time, and no makeup, and were really boring, and had loads and loads of rules and regulations. So that's what I thought um, as a teenager. Christians. Uh, Christians are like, and I also I remember thinking, what they actually believe in Adam and Eve? Oh my gosh! Um, and they believe in creation, and and this guy called Jesus, they must be like a bit twisted. I re I did actually think that, which is a bit embarrassing. Sorry, Lord. But um, anyway, when I when I got married, um, um, we were actually um, on tour at the time, and there was a, a guy there actually who, this is going to sound really bad. He really irritated me. Um, and he was a Christian, and he, I mean, he was a real full-on Christian, and I uh, couldn't understand, you know, because I was an adult at this time, couldn't understand why I didn't like him so much, because I liked everybody, mm. and I just didn't like him, so I thought it was unreasonable of me, so um, I decided I was going to make a real effort with him, and um, get over my own barriers, my own boundaries, and get to know him. So um, I did, and um, it didn't seem to get any better. Um, but uh, I was pregnant at the time as well and I remember having my baby and my husband at the time had asked him to visit us in hospital and I just thought why have you asked him the person that it really irritates me I've just had a baby why have you asked him anyway this guy walked into the room and um, I'll never forget it because I was just my whole attitude changed towards him he brought in so much love with him it was like he brought in light it was amazing and I, it was like something something happened in me, my, my, it's like I could see and um, I, I just from that moment on I didn't want to be away from him and um, it was uh, so it was me, my new baby, my husband and this guy and we were always together um, for, for weeks and months afterwards and um, he used to tell us about Jesus and everything like that and the Holy Spirit and God and uh, I didn't really take much notice of it but I, I knew he had something I, I couldn't work out what it was, but I wanted to be near him, so um, I would uh, I would make up excuses to so that he'd come back to our place after the show, and my excuses were questions like, oh, what about Jesus, and what about this, and what about creation, I'd just make up random Bible to get him to come back so that he would stay with us and talk to us about Jesus, even though I didn't really want to hear about Jesus. And then one day he said to us, would you come to church? And I thought, okay, that's taken a bit too far. But my husband agreed, and um, we went to church, and at the end, the guy, I hadn't really been affected at all, and the guy said, who wants to give their life to Jesus? And my husband put his hand up, and I just thought, what are you doing? We hadn't discussed this, because I didn't realise it was a personal decision. It's like, you've just been, you know, you've just been you're having an emotional reaction. You've just been sucked into a cult. And that's what I thought. And... Um, and of course the other guy was like, wow, praise God, you're my brother now, la la la. And I was like, oh, great. So it seemed to me, you know, it seemed to me that, um, that they were now in their little clique and I was missing out. And I, I was a complete teenager about it. And um, I remember going home and um, feeling really quite annoyed because I, I wasn't in their little gang anymore. And um, this guy came up to me and he said, look, Anna, all that's happened is that your husband has, there's a line here, and he drew a line on the floor, but it was really weird, it was like he drew a line of fire, and uh, he said, all that's happened is that your husband has crossed over the line, and when you're ready, you can cross over the line. And I thought, well, I'm not having that. So I went into the other room, and I went, dear God, please come into my life, really sorry for everything I've done wrong, amen, and that was it. Didn't mean a word of it, and I said it like a stroppy teenager, really bad. <laughs> And I went back into the room and I went, hey, I've just become a Christian. And they all went, hey, praise God, praise God. And I was thinking, I'm such a liar, I'm such a liar. <laughs> anyway, that night I went to sleep. And this is the only way I can describe what happened, and it's really true. Went to sleep and I woke up on the roof of the theatre. 
absolutely freaked out of my head. Everything was ev everything was detailed. Everything was heightened, and I was at the back of a crowd, and I was stooped down because I, I was. I, I needed to get to the front of the crowd and I knew I needed to get to the front of the crowd and I was I was pushing people out of the way and even though I was thinking how am I at the back of the at the top of the theatre with a with a, in a crowd even though I was thinking that I knew I had to get to the front and I was pushing all these people out of the way and I was saying I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, excuse me, excuse me and I could see the fabric of their material, I could feel their their bodies when I was moving them. It was amazing and I got to the front of the crowd and I, I managed to stand up and there was this there was this man in the middle of the crowd and as I stood up he turned around and it was Jesus and he, and he looked at me and he said believe what your husband believes for it's the truth and that was it, that was it. I, the next thing I knew I'm back in my bed trying to wake up my husband who's asleep, wake up, wake up, I've just met Jesus, he's like, mm, like that. And I, and I knew that if I went to sleep that night, I convinced myself that it wasn't real, that it didn't really happen. So I stayed awake all night, I stayed awake all night. And then the next morning I remember going to the bus stop and waiting for a bus. And it's really strange because I knew, I was really aware that all of my life I had waited for something. Waited to become a teenager, waited to, to get a job, waited to drive a car to feel like a grown up. Waited to have a family, waited to get married and I'd never... That feeling of waiting was always there, and I knew it was always there. And that morning, I was at a bus stop waiting for a bus to go to work, and yet I wasn't waiting anymore. I, I, and it was like I'd, I'd wait, not even for a bus, you know, that whole feeling of waiting was gone. And it was like I'd waited for 24 years to meet Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, and that was an amazing, amazing thing in my life, and it turned my life around completely. But it didn't happen straight away because then I thought, oh gosh, I've got to start believing in the Bible now, but and, and even reading the Bible. But actually, um, that was a process, and and it's so easy for me to believe in creation now. I mean, I haven't brainwashed myself. It's just easier. I completely get it. Um, get how easy it can be to. I mean, it's much. It makes more sense to me. So a lot of things fall into place, but I didn't really kind of start to really understand um, what Jesus did until actually probably about nine years after that moment. As regards to the art, um, I can't sing and I, it happened because um, I was at a, I used to go to a house church and it was a really progressive church and we had this incredible worship leader who would just go off in tongues and just sing for hours in the spirit and so would most of the other people there or they just, you know, sing prophetically and I couldn't even join in the regular songs so I felt really bad and I remember one time just getting really frustrated and I know God doesn't mind what I sound like but I do and um <laughs> And uh, I came home and I was really fed up and I sat on the floor and I was like, God, please, I really want to worship you and I want to give something to you, but I'm not at that stage where I'm so uninhibit uninhibited that I'm ready to just let my voice out on everybody. And um, I had my Bible in my hand at the time and I remember it, it literally fell open. I think it's in Exodus and it said, it's the first time the Holy Spirit comes on someone to give them... Um, uh, in, in extra gifts to make um, the, the Holy Tabernacle beautiful and in gifts of craft and everything like that and I just thought wow God could you do that for me because then I wouldn't have to you know embarrass myself singing and I could worship you in, in some other form and um, I started painting the next day and uh, it, it wasn't very good at all actually but, um, but the Lord said to give it to a friend of mine um, and I just thought, oh, really? This is just, she's going to just be embarrassed and she's going to, it's, I'm going to humiliate myself, actually. But it was so strong, I had to come out of my comfort zone. It's all about humbling, isn't it? So I came out of my comfort zone and kind of went, the Lord said, he wants to give you this. So I kind of handed her this, this really dreadful painting. And she burst into tears. And uh, I thought, oh, it's really bad. She's crying, no. Um, and she said, no, I've, I've seen that in a, in a vision. So I was really blessed by that, and I thought, wow, okay, God. And then um, that happened a couple more times with, again, not very good paintings at all. 
and uh, and I thought, well, that's amazing, God, that you would do this, but but could you accelerate this gift? If it is a gift, could you accelerate? Could you actually make it so people do want to hang the paintings on their walls, or so it does bless them and and impart something to them, and maybe something of healing as well, and. Um, so then the first painting I painted after that was called Be Still, which was, um, um, I think I was going through a divorce at the time. Well, yeah, I was going through my divorce. And um, the Lord had said, you know, that there are, there are immense storms that come on everybody. And he led me back to that passage where Jesus is in the boat and there's a huge storm and he just says, be still. And in, some, in our situations, I felt that he was saying, be still. I know this is awful for you, as it is for everybody who goes through this, but be still in it. Um, and so that was the first painting I painted that was of any... It was strange because I, I can't, I've never painted anything like it, and it was of sea and clouds and sky and wet sand. And I'd never painted water, sky, wet sand, haven't got a clue how to paint. And I, and I stood back and I just thought, God, you've done that because I can't paint that. I'm not a skilled painter. And I knew that the Holy Spirit had guided me to paint that. And that was so encouraging for me because I knew that he was working through me to encourage me in my situation. But I also knew that it was for other people as well. Um, because life isn't easy. And what I want to impart through the artwork is, is hope and some form of of healing. Um, I've had visions with the arts, but you know, visions, they need to come into place, don't they? And I don't know if mine have yet. I'm thinking um, that I, because I work for the, the healing rooms as well, um, and I'm hoping that the artwork will be used in the healing rooms and maybe more prophetically as well, because I know there's, there's conferences coming up and I'll, I'll paint at the conferences, but um, as long as they keep ministering to people um, who who need that, then then that's okay. I haven't really clearly heard from God yet, um, so I'll just carry on doing this until he leads me in another way or until another door opens. Um, I'm on um, Facebook under Anna Sophia, um, so you can add me as a friend and I'll feel really popular. And um, but then I have got a website. It's not a very good one, um, and uh, but but it's because um, it's homemade, so you know it hasn't got all the clever stuff on it. But it's www.impart-anna.co.uk, um, and you can see the pictures on that. All the pictures on Facebook as well. Um, and I do do exhibitions sometimes, but I usually put that on Facebook if I'm doing an exhibition. And sometimes I, I'll do the, the big Christian festivals like Grapevine and things like that. So, but I always advertise on Facebook if I'm going to do that. But my paintings and the prints are all most people buy them through Facebook. Um, so, and I mean I do I do sell originals. Um, but obviously they're more expensive and no one's got any money at the moment and so I sell prints really cheaply, so that's a good thing. <laughs>